Aloha beautiful souls. Happy moon day. Happy Monday. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me today for the weekly plasma quantum energy share. Well, we have quite a big week coming up with a lot of different themes, a lot of wonderful opportunities to recognize our multidimensionality and to practice our self mastery. Before I get into the details of the week, we're going to be talking about the energies and themes and so much more for the week of October 14th to October 20th. So before we jump in a little bit of housekeeping, please be sure to like, subscribe, share if you resonate with this message. If you know anyone who may benefit from this kind of in-depth information for these times of shift. If you would like to join me in a live webinar, this coming Wednesday, the 16th at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I'm going to be hosting my first live webinar, the first over the entire year, as I had to go offline for a lot of integration for the majority of the year. So I'm so excited to be back, so excited to be doing a live mastery webinar. And we're going to be talking about the energetics of the entire year under the theme and kind of lens of the post-eclipse, right? And we're going to be talking about massive themes, massive energies, basically kind of book ending the beginning of the year and what we what we received. Comparing that to where we are now and seeing if there are any adjustments and changes that need to be made with the newfound knowledge and clearing that we have received. So there's going to be some strategy involved, kind of the game plan for the end of the year. Because what's interesting is these last three months of the year, it's like the energetics of the entire year are super condensed. So what we were talking about all year, as far as this being an eight year, right? The dragon year, a lot of power dynamics, and just, there's just so much transformation, seriously, aligning more with our divinity and what that looks like, how there are subtle changes that are not so subtle, right? Even personality changes, lifestyle changes, all kinds of things happening as we're coming more into our soul embodiment. And there's a stripping away a huge stripping away of what was formerly associated with our ego. This also includes um, several different programs, including the Keys, Codes, and Crossroads of 2024. So you can watch that mastery class if you like before attending the live. But we're going to be covering a lot of the energies of this year and then having essentially a group clearing and a group oracle session. So a cosmic Q&A session together. And details for that are in the description box below. It's only $33 on New Earth One, which is a really great deal for a two-hour live session. All right, so let's jump into this week. Wow. Well, with the solar activity combined with the cosmic activity and everything that the planets are doing, we have the opportunity to be extra aware of literally every aspect of our being this week. <laughs> so it's intense, right? If we were going to give it a, a metric system, it would be a 10 out of 10. Definitely wanting to be extra aware of our emotions and potential anger, outbursts, and essentially how we monitor this and kind of prepare and prevent this kind of unconscious behavior is self-care and really tending to ourself, checking in with the inner child to see, checking in with our emotional state, our energetic state. You know, are, do we feel imbalanced? Have we been giving too much to everyone and everything and not enough to ourselves, right? So typically when we feel depleted, and you'll notice, oh, this has to do with your light quotient as well, that when your energy starts to get really low, you're starting to feel like you're running on empty. That's where some of the emotional outbursts can kind of start to come forth, a critical nature. And this is a really great opportunity to see how we get reactive, perhaps, when we don't feel fulfilled, right? And also in practicing our mastery to be sure that we are giving ourselves whatever it is that we need to feel balanced, to feel nurtured, and to feel energetically complete. You may observe a lot in the body. So I've been having sensations traveling all through the body for several weeks after quitting that job. I have had incredible stiffness, tension in the right side of my neck and right shoulder. And I have an injury in my right shoulder from several years ago that periodically I will reactivate, right? <laughs> and so for me, it's been a lot about learning how to completely deprogram everything that I knew in the old life, the old personality, the ego uh, association with being masculine, right? What What is being masculine? Um, so essentially having to decompress all of that and allow a whole new form 
of the sacred masculine to come forth, right? And what this means for me personally is, you know, no longer running myself into the ground, right? No longer over giving, over protecting, over caring, um, overdoing, carrying too much, right? Shouldering too much, carrying too much baggage, like all the old stuff, you know, you start to become aware of more layers of it as we're dropping density from the body. This week, you may observe a lot of body sensations and there's a lot going on with the light body too. This will be activated by the solar flares, also the planetary activity and your own programming, uh, how you're responding, you know, uh, or not responding, right? So one concept I love to share is body talk. The language of your body as an intelligence, right? So the body is the vehicle, the vessel, the temple for our soul and our spirit, right? And it has its own primal mammalian and Lemurian at the higher levels, consciousness, right? So it's always trying to communicate to us with responses to everything, food, environments, people, even thought forms. And so you want to make sure you're paying attention like, oh yeah, you know, I've, I've been having this pain in my hip or my lower back or my foot and start to look at the metaphysics and do some star mapping of the body to get some feedback, right? So we want to make sure we're not disembodied and we're not just living in the head or even above and out of the head. Um, we could be really accident prone with that, with how fast these energies are moving. So you really want to make sure, okay, yeah, I'm feeling my feet, you know, I'm in my body, I'm intentionally landing my energy, my consciousness from the skin in within my being, within my body. Be very careful driving. People are going to be emotional, you see some road rage, you know, and people will be out of body also. So make sure that's not you. Do your best to be really present and ask to be grounded in, you know, connected with your vehicle, with the angels, right? Everything you do, bring a new level of mindfulness because there's a lot of spinning. There's a lot of spinning energy out there. So we have about a month left of this really intense energy with Pluto and it's wrapping it up in Capricorn, right? So we are ending a 16 year cycle. And so you wanna look at how was I functioning for the last 16 years from 2008 until 2024? What were the major themes that I was experiencing? What was happening at 2000? and eight, right? Because you're going to see another layer of that now with 2024 going into the uh, 2040s. And the main topic with this, if we want to try to focus on one key code, is where do you have any resistance, apprehension, fear about your own self-governance, about being an authority, about leadership in your life, right? And feeling hesitant or afraid to express that authority in some form. So this is really about claiming our sovereignty and our self-governance and our expertise, our knowingness of who we are. You know, I know who I am. I know why I'm here. This is how I need to function. Really starting to look at where you're afraid to be your authentic self and to express this. Coming in with some fantastic support for that expression and for re-strategizing, taking a new look at ourselves and how to implement these changes and these adjustments is the full moon in Aries on the 17th. So this is gonna support us with all of the necessary shifts. Now, if you've been feeling stuck or stagnant or unsure of the hows of things, right, how to proceed, this full moon is definitely going to support you, kind of guiding us and giving us the courage as well, helping us find the courage and then maintain. And one of the phrases I heard when I was out in the forest a few days ago picking mushrooms was the courage of our convictions, right? So you may be really inspired with some action steps to take and a lot, a lot of clarity may come and it's up to each of us to have the strength and the courage to say no to fear and to trust what we are feeling as our truth and what needs to come next, right? So this is really starting to live more of a faith-based path in alignment with your soul's expression. Another thing with Aries energy is that there are multiple layers or aspects of identity, right? So the first foundational level with Aries is the self, the individual, the ego, the original I am. And you can see that there's a variety of layers, right? Depending on our level of consciousness. So this week, as we start to feel the buildup, to the 17th. We're basically in the arc of the full moon now, right? Being three days out on the 14th, typically leading up three days, three days after, um, you start to feel the rise in the energy. And that can add to that kind of combustive or outburst as people are responding from their egos. And you want to be aware of which 
identity, which ego aspect? Are you in the wounded child? Are you in your masculine? Are you in your feminine? Are you in the conscious form of those or the unconscious form? Which aspect of you is presenting right now to express and need some nurturing? And how can you tend to that in your mastery, right? In your own world privately so that it doesn't spill over and adversely affect, right? Or negatively affect others. So this is really a huge opportunity for energy mastery. And so with Aries being leadership, confidence, and action, you could feel that emotional supercharge. You could feel this call into a more of a leadership role in your life as a way shower, um, as a change agent, as a light being, essentially as a soul, as the light of your soul, right? As a Christed being. And this is bringing that Christ consciousness, that Buddha consciousness into every aspect of our reality. So that's going to look different for every single person, right? Some of us are in front of the camera. Some of us are behind the camera. Some of us are doing the editing of the footage, like just to share, like everyone has different roles. It's whatever you're feeling called to do, right? And remember again, because we want to say, where are you comfortable? And starting to really assess, well, gosh, is that me holding myself back? And I feel comfortable because feeling at this lower space, at least I feel comfortable versus taking a risk and trying something new. So you really want to look at where are you? What's the programming coming up with all of this, right? Great time for mastery. And this last week, we're ending uh, Libra season. So about the 22nd, 23rd or so of this month, we're going to be done with the Libra energy and we're going to be going into the sun, going into Scorpio energy, which is a very different energy. So I want to return now as we're wrapping up the solar energies of this month, the next 10 days or so, not quite. You want to go back to that material we covered in the beginning of the month, which is all about the laws of your kingdom. You know, how will you write the codes of your land, your land, right? Your council of your own divine wisdom, right? And stewards of your reality, as well as being light workers and light keepers and agents of change, right? Who came here to assist and to bring forth the new earth. So we have to be pretty relentless now in our fixation, our obsession, our focus on new earth, that all of our actions, encounters, speech, our creations, are nourishing new earth now. So needless to say, right, it's a lot of responsibility, a lot of mindfulness and heartfulness this coming week. And you're going to start to be given the opportunities when it comes to your own sovereign laws and boundaries of enforcing them in a way which it's different than the old paradigm when we say that. What we mean by that is that you're sticking to your guns for yourself on your own behalf with yourself. So you're standing by yourself, supporting yourself, holding yourself in love through all things and no longer allowing yourself to compromise or to be uh, manipulated or persuaded or anything like that. Conversely, we're not doing that to anyone else, right? This is really holding these codes very solidly from within ourselves and our pure power and just not budging when it comes to compromise or anything that is not of integrity. So you'll explore this end of the Libra season now, the fine line, right, between holding your own and where that may trigger people, where it may prompt discussions. So we definitely want to bring in compassionate communication. There's going to need to be a lot of communication of this is who I am. This is how I function. You know, please respect that. How can I respect you? So we want to assist others in their own self-discovery with this. It's a really huge activation, guys. This is a really big week. So a lot of light body activation. See how you're feeling in your nervous system. You could be feeling really wired, heart racing. You could feel exhausted and just so heavy and feel magnetized to your bed. There are all kinds of processes going on with our light bodies. And so for me, over the weekend, I just felt so heavy, like I was made of lead. And I just felt magnetized to my bed. And that's when I know, okay, I'm integrating now all of these amazing solar flares. Layers, right now they're doing the work on my physical body and when that happens it's like I don't really even have the energy to speak definitely not to do anything and just lay there and rest sometimes I might read but it's not a space where I can actually output any energy so you're kind of more in a receiver mode right integration mode conversely I woke up this morning so energized I have not had coffee I'm so energized and I was like okay yep boop. it's a little bit before seven I'm gonna start the energy report you know so when we super surrender super 
over surrender and release into these processes, your energy comes back online that much faster and more powerfully, which is just so wonderful. So watch resistance, you know, watch stories, ego stories about what's happening in the body. You could find plenty of opportunity with old paradigm energetics at play with regards to the body, you know, when it comes to trying to give a name to what we're experiencing or give it a definition uh, or a diagnosis. So watch where your power goes with these things and bring it back to communicating with your body. This goes back to the body talk. So what's up body? How are you? If you're new to communicating with your body, a really great way to begin, this is how I learned, was to let your body speak to you. So here's an example. You're like, oh man, my low back is so sore. And that could be part of birthing realities, by the way. That could be part of activating your kundalini, by the way. That could be part of clearing the lower chakras, right? Which we're doing so much root chakra work. This whole year has been one giant root chakra, roto-rooter clearing, right? So let's say, okay, yeah, you're having the discomfort in the lower back. And so you find a nice comfortable place to sit or lie down, whatever is best for you. And you pretend to be, you bring your consciousness to that part of your body and you speak for that part of your body as if you were that part of your body. So you intend to turn your consciousness into that part of your body and speak for it. So you become your low back and you say, what do you have to say, lower back? And then your lower back will say something. And so for me, it was very obvious. It was, I don't feel supported. Wow, look at that. Okay, there's the program. Oh my gosh. Okay, now we have the jump off point, right? To start investigating and to start seeing where is that not really true, right? So these are wonderful opportunities for continuing to deprogram at deeper and deeper levels. And you want to just be really intimately aware of your energy, what's feeling like it's zapping your energy, what feels like it's nourishing your energy. You're going to start to get so anal retentive in a way <laughs> with how you spend your energy, right? Because that's the most precious currency, your life force, your light force. So we're, we'll be making another return to that right, of how we are expending, investing our energy. You could actually have with all of this Mars energy, uh, Mars rules the physical body and the head and the life force energy that's animating the body. So it could make us accident prone. You could notice things with your heart. I did have also some pretty strong heart pain over the weekend and had to rest and just lie there through that and just breathe and be in the silence and just be in my body and just breathe through it. So anything, you know, heart pain, blood pressure, uh, low blood pressure, high blood pressure, depends on your body, your situation. You could have rashes, boils, blisters. You could feel like your skin is sunburned even if you haven't gotten any solar exposure. This is all the solar activations also happening inside of us. Um, breakouts are possible with these solar flares. And then so you think about, okay, we have the solar flare energy bathing us in holy fire. And then we have Mars bathing us in holy fire, right? With, it's just so powerful. So again, more of this Phoenix energy, a lot of the rebirth Phoenix energy. And you think about the beautiful Aurora Borealis that we've had here to support us all bathing us in these ethereal colors right so you see how the universe is so kind and generous and gifts us with just the most intense beauty and ethereal magic while we're going through these hardcore transformations right so even in the toughest stuff there's still magic there's still beauty these are really important things to remember as we're getting ready for the wrapping up this year and also getting ready for next year because those energetics are already here it's really about at the end of the day with everything going Going on everything dissolving right as we are continuing to deprogram ourselves from the old paradigm we're really questioning truth for ourselves what is our truth and starting to look at the basics of universal law right divine law with this we're talking about building a deeper connection and a deeper trust with your higher power or with your inner faith your inner being your higher self your soul. There's so many words for this divinity that we are uh, that for so long we felt separated from, right? And now we're having these holy reunions and it's really beautiful. It's really empowering. It's also very confronting because we have to take accountability for all that we did in our unconsciousness, right? We just had a uh, Yom Kippur and there's a lot of beautiful energies about atonement. It's just really powerful and it's a really cool, I think, really powerful holiday experience, a very sacred uh, witness, observation experience. So it's all about atonement and accountability and forgiveness as well, you know, of what we did when we were unconscious and that now we do have the opportunity to choose otherwise, right? So that's our, our great responsibility. Expanding as you're releasing so much, you want to give more energy into the direction of trusting divine source love and abundance. 
deprogramming the feeling afraid of change or what's different. So a lot of us are finding that we're responding to divinity and we're responding to the changes and to our dreams coming true from kind of this knee jerk reaction, this automatic response that's coming from all of the trauma that we experienced in the old paradigm, always having to be on edge, right? Or feeling threatened. So we have to realize that this is not that. So you want to take some time, you know, and acknowledge the experiences you've had and how different this awakening process is, how going into the next chapter is not the hell realms, right? It's the opposite. It's the heavenly realms. So you want to see where are you having issues trusting your universe? Ultimately, these reflect on where we have issues trusting ourselves, right? Because the old paradigm was all about twisting us against our own guidance so that we didn't even know how to hear our own guidance, right? So that we would be easily controlled. And so we are really pulling out of the Stockholm syndrome of the old paradigm and learning how to connect and how to trust our inner wisdom again, ourselves, our hearts, our heart's desires, right? So there's a lot of potential for reviewing and releasing repressed stuff. And so you want to welcome in the improvements to your experience that, yeah, you deserve this. You've worked hard for this. The universe sees you. The universe loves you. We have exited out of that awful place. We had to go through that to learn so much and to learn what love is. And a great way to continue to align yourself with your highest realities and creations and desires is to practice the art of appreciation. So you don't even have to focus on outcomes or any of the specifics just softly, gently focus on all the things that you appreciate. You could appreciate this podcast. You could appreciate, oh, the sky is bright and blue today, you know, or the sun felt warm today. Or if you didn't have any sun, like we're going to have a rainy day, which I'm very excited about. Oh, I love, you know, how electrified I feel with the moisture in the air from the rain. I love the music that the rain makes as it falls. I love it when I smile at a stranger and they smile back and they're all lit up. What are the things that you appreciate? Because that is heart fuel. That is light body fuel. And it will continue to support you to maintain a high frequency. So our maintenance is very, very important right now. Your light body, your energy is the most important because that's how you're going to create your reality. And so for me, I've been learning a lot about, okay, no longer having the typical linear cognitive function, no longer having the same physical function, having to deal with the anxiety and fear that that first brought up about survival and allowed me to go really deep into the realities being energetic and finding new levels of personal power, right? The atomic energy. And that all has to do with our intent and our emotions and our beliefs, right? It's very exciting. So getting much more conceptual and energetic on a quantum level as a conscious creator being here, right? So you're going to notice a lot of opportunities for that so that you are kind of using less of the external world as a reference and more your own internal energy and dialogue as a reference. What really helps with this is affirmations and even the most basic ones. um, Like I love this one from Serious Joy is, you know, today I love myself and I'm going to love myself some more and I love my life. To me, that is so powerful. And I've been working with that one for almost a year since last Libra season. And it is such a game changer. But you want to find the simple affirmations, write them down, and you want to go through these often, maybe every hour if you need to, because we're really doing the deep work right now of retraining the brain and rewriting all of that wiring. It's called the corticalization. It's the grooves that are worn in the brain as we continue to think the same thoughts and beliefs over and over again. They actually wear grooves into the brain like a record, right? So when we're deprogramming, it takes a consistent effort and you hear so many different specialists say, oh yeah, it takes, you know, 45 days or 60 days, you know, 30 days to change a belief, right? Well, that's if you're working on it every day throughout the day. So it could be the most simple, but just appreciating yourself, being grateful and humble for life and that we get to be here for these amazing times, right? And to ask to be shown more clearly uh, so that we're perceiving, right? Rather than thinking our way through our reality. So a daily discipline will really provide the stability for you, uh, which then when this is done consistently, this is what builds the geometries to build your new earth reality. And like we have said a little earlier, it's time. It's time, everyone. It's time to devote our everything to new earth. The old earth is collapsing. And so it's time to fully put on our architect hats, our architect hats of the new reality, of the new world, what we have seen. And just very simply, do not participate 
in the energetics of the old, right? That's the best way to start to build new earth is to just put our energy and our focus and just no longer engage in the old paradigm dynamic. Okay, so we covered the affirmation piece and really it's about honoring the unified self. What is the unified self? It's when our mental state, our emotional state, our physical state, and our energetic state are all aligned. They're all attuned. And so you want to pay attention. How's your body doing? That's the body talk piece. Where is your mind? Where's the quality? And for me, I say just try not to think anymore at all. Try to just live in the heart space and perceive. So all the information that you actually need to know will come to you. Thinking is exhausting. It wastes a lot of light and essentially we're just looping and just wasting our time. So we have to learn how to function in this new paradigm, which is completely different, right? You'll notice that overthinking, it's just a total waste of time. You feel exhausted, exasperated, you start to spiral. So you notice how that thinking process doesn't serve. If you start to feel kind of a sinking in your being, like a sinking in your energy, you start to feel yourself drop into a different dimensional frequency, right? A lower frequency. You really want to be all over yourself, very disciplined. It's kind of like the sacred monk, you know, the light keeper, the light warrior that has a meditation practice and some kind of a focusing practice of your energy every minute now, every minute. So it's really amplifying our mastery now. But this is all about heart-centered living and bringing that forth, right? So thank you for tuning in for all your wonderful comments. This is a really big week, everyone. <laughs> this is, okay, everyone, every mastery tool we've ever learned, there's going to be more coming online to replace the ones that aren't working anymore. And these are a lot of things we're going to cover in the webinar on Wednesday. So if you're around, I'd love to see you. It'd be so nice to connect face-to-face. -face. It's going to be on Zoom. And then we will have the replay available too if you can't make the live. Um, I'm also offering the micro sessions if anyone's interested in that. Full sessions. We have a lot of gifts and goodies here to assist you that are all in the mystery school, different downloads. Uh, activations and different rituals highly recommending the burn ritual of the reprogram your reality it's very powerful I teach you how to work with the elemental of fire um, there's also my Everclear link I'm an advisor there on that network too if you want to do by the minute quantum discoveries so there's a lot of opportunities for support if you're looking for that and just sending you lots of love and appreciation and um, seeing everyone's wings and just lots of positivity around this these are the times that we came for and they are challenging, but you'll feel your growth and it's very satisfying, <laughs> right? So, so much love, everyone. Take good care. I'll see you soon.